Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Friends of Caffeine and Carburetors, where we highlight great cars, great people, and some great stories. I'm standing in front of a 911 Dakar. Uh, this car was going to be one of the highlights of the October Caffeine and Carburetor event, which I unfortunately had to cancel. We reached out to the owner, Howard Rubin, and he was gracious, gracious enough to bring it here today at Waveney Park. Howard, come on in. Hello, thank Doug. you. Thank you for bringing this beautiful uh, Dakar. Do it. First question, why the Dakar? <laughs> well, when you live in the wilds of uh, New Canaan and Town Ridge, you need to be able to get around in all conditions. <laughs> well, not exactly that, but I've had a lot of, uh, you know, super fast cars, Lamborghinis and everything, and you've been on tracks. And the thing I learned with my Land Rovers, it was much more interesting to figure out how to really go slow in a race and a rally sure. and things like that. Sure, and finish. Fast and finish. Sure. So. This really attracted me when it came out, and I've okay. always been following the Paris to car races since sure. I was a kid. So that's what the excitement when this car came out. Okay. And it's also fun. It has all this, <clears throat> this Lego set on the roof. Yes, you get that? Porsche Lego. So, yeah. Um, this is, I understand, one of 2,500. Right. <clears throat> and this is number, I think, 665. And okay. the interesting thing is, I, I'm told most of them are being gobbled up in Europe and not in the U.S. because the uh, U.S. doesn't have really a rally culture. And that's what's really yeah. interesting here. Yeah. So I think there are fewer here based on population density or owner density than you'd ever expect. I have but, to ask you, have you taken it off road yet? Well, again, we talk about the wilds up here off road in the uh, <laughs> unpaved areas of Bedford, New York, which is uh, not a speed, right. keeping the speed limit, but just interesting to see how the traction systems works and Good everything enough. else. Tell us about the drivetrain. Start with the motor. <clears throat> motor, this is a GTS motor, but there's some modifications to it. Apparently what Porsche did is they put in the Porsche turbo cooling system and they put in the, the GT3 motor mounts and stuff. And I okay. think it's about 473 horsepower. But the more interesting thing is through the transmission and the other settings they have in this car, it has a normal setting, it has a sport setting, but it also has rally and off-road. So it's the combination of the whole drivetrain that makes it yeah. interesting. Plus the tires. Plus what they did is, I feel like I'm doing an advertisement today, but they adopted the lift system they have on the 911s to also work in the rear so the whole car can go up and down. So How many, go, what's the height difference? I think it goes up about almost two inches. I think it really has the clearance and they describe it as a, as a crossover. I mean, okay. you're not, not going to take this where you can go with a heavy duty off-road over rocks and yeah. compete like that. But it's, uh, I think the total clearance is about seven and a half to eight inches. Okay. It's up all the way. Okay. And the tires are, <clears throat> you know, all year round. This is unusual Porsche because the true option on this thing is non-off-road tires. So totally backwards. Yeah. So yeah. Fun. Uh, transmission. How many transmission speeds? is the, their typical eight, eight speed or eight speed, you know, okay. and, uh, the other thing that's interesting about it, I said, I think the gearing ratios are a bit different because this will actually have launch control in uh, off-road mode or rally mode in the sand. So the off-road here is not, the launch is really designed not for pavement like we're on now, but to dig you out of sand without okay. going underground. Color, uh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, this, this is their, uh, they call it the shade, shade green, which is sort of interesting. But uh, I think a lot of the ones you see have the mar martini kind of stripes on them, which was nice yes. when they competed, I think, in 1984 or so. They were blue and white. Yeah, right. Red, I think red, white, and blue, and you put yeah. everything together. So, yeah. you know, that's actually what I was originally after. But then I saw this, and I liked the badging on it and everything else. And I thought this was just, just absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. And the accessories of fuel tanks. Yeah, the interesting thing about, I mean, the whole top, as I said, you have the what they call the traction mats and the two mats and things on. The two tanks up there, and uh, just don't mix them up if you really use them. One's for water, one's for gasoline. I haven't figured out what the labels are yet. Matter of fact, with the system, of Porsche will get upset. I haven't totally figured out how to get them off if I needed them right now. But I have lots of keys. It's like I could be living in, opening a door in a dungeon or something. And there's a very special folding uh, Porsche little shovel over there. And there's a large, actually in the trunk right now, they give you a large duffel bag to hold some of the accessories, but you put, you put that on the roof, it just flaps around. Yeah. But the whole thing is it's beautiful to have. And one of the features maybe you'll see in some of the other shots of the car, it has these fabulous LED I noticed lights that. in front. Yeah. And uh, the brilliant thing about that is that to control them, apparently in the design of the car, they have a magnetic switch. So this just sits on top of here and the magnetic switch activates it. So they didn't have to drill through your roof and make a mini sunroof to get to it. <laughs> I would think this would be fun in snow as well. Yeah. 
and hopefully we're having a more of a snow winter. I, think yeah, I yeah. retired the snow plow at my house <laughs> and uh, I'll just use this to go up and down, just put a little scoop on the front and maybe the traction mats like that yeah. on the front in a V-shape. Porsche is known for their option lists. Mm -hmm. uh, what other options might we find on her? Options you find, uh, you can put a full roll bar in here. You can have seats that are actually comfortable and have heaters in them if you need. My seats are their full buckets, uh, carbon fiber seats, and actually the, to make them work a little better. And they're, I mean, they're wonderful to sit in once you're inside, but they're really full bucket seats. Okay. They're really designed for racing. So and I actually have seat cushions for my kitchen chair in there, so I'm at the right height and get in and, and comfortable sometimes. <laughs> Anything else you would like to tell us about this? No, I actually, the, the thing about it, I think, is I, that's really wonderful is it, it's, it's a real 911. It seems as reliable and wonderful as a 911. It's more nimble. It's like my 1990s Porsches because the, both the hood and the uh, tail and back are carbon fiber. So this is a maybe two, 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 three hundred pounds lighter than a regular one. So the car feels super nimble. It's unbelievable. Okay. It's like going back to even my Porsche slant nose in 87 where I had, you know, no, no power assist for anything. Sure, to break. sure. So, so it's, it's really wonderful. It's like a throwback in time that took you fast forward in time. Wonderful. Well, Howard, thank you so much for bringing her. She is unique. Uh, and again, it's good seeing you. Okay, a long handshake again. Thanks <laughs> Take a lot. Care. All right.